welcome to another episode of the History of Mortal Kombat. Last time we covered Rain in an updated, much more detailed and complete video, showcasing his creation inspired by classic music and pop culture, his insertion as a troll in the Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 Arcade, all the way through his multiple quests to find the truth of his origins, only to result in an unwavering need to rule over all. Today I'll be revisiting another combatant in serious need of an update, the Shaolin Monk, the eventual Fire God, the man destined to win Mortal Kombat and prevent Earthrealm from falling into the hands of the evil Shao Kahn, Liu Kang. My fist is going through your chest. That'll never happen. <laughs> Although other characters have been used to sell Mortal Kombat in the past, like Scorpion Sub-Zero being among the most marketable to the masses, Liu Kang is universally known as the main man, Mortal Kombat's central hero, most of the time, considering that in both timelines he did have a fall from grace and eventual redemption, which of course we'll be covering. Liu Kang, the grand champion of Mortal Kombat, began life on a sketchpad as Yoshitsune Minamoto. His description follows. Yoshitsune is a direct descendant of Japan's great Minamoto clan and is highly skilled in all the martial arts. It is rumored he received secret tuition from the Tengu Mountain Demons, who are expert swordsmen and masters of all martial arts. Fun fact, the Tengu clan does appear in Mortal Kombat Armageddon in Conquest Mode, the only time they've ever been mentioned. John Tobias sketched his early appearance, a young man with black hair, a bandana wrapped around his head, and a uniform that looks very similar to the one that Shang Tsung would come to wear in Mortal Kombat 2. As the story for the original Mortal Kombat continued to develop and evolve into its final form, the main hero also went through vast changes. The development team simply couldn't handle saying his name. It was long and overly complicated for the simple American audience that the game was being developed for. The name needed to be short and easy to pronounce. Inspiration was found in the development team's love of martial arts films with the 1978 film The 36 Chamber of Shaolin, starring Gordon Liu who played a Chinese Shaolin monk. As an homage to Gordon Liu, the character's first name became Liu, and the family name Kang was added. Instead of the descendant of a Japanese warrior clan, Liu Kang was also redesigned as a Chinese Shaolin monk, complete with a shaved head and monk robes. His new description, once a member of the super secret White Lotus Society, Liu Kang left the organization in order to represent all Shaolin temples in the tournament. Kang is strong in his beliefs and despises Shang Lao. He competes only for the chance to expose the true nature of the contest. Korean martial artist Ho Sung Pak was cast in the role of Liu Kang and he caused another change in the character. He refused to shave his head like a traditional Shaolin monk would. So Liu Kang was redesigned again, matching the previous style, more inspired by iconic martial arts actor Bruce Lee. A full head of hair, shirtless, black pants, and elements of his backstory were inspired by Bruce Lee's 1973 film Enter the Dragon. His peaceful ways learned as a Shaolin monk were kept intact in the game with his fatality. A cartwheel that sends his opponent flying in the air versus brutally killing them. A very unpopular fatality, but there is a story reason for it. With those elements, the main hero of Mortal Kombat was born. Liu Kang. Although Liu Kang's original look and feel were inspired by Bruce Lee, his later appearance starting in Mortal Kombat 2 added in elements taken from Marvel Comics' Shang-Chi, the master of Kung Fu, with red elements on his clothing, red bandana, arm gauntlets. And that's the history behind the creation of Liu Kang as the series' main hero, but let's answer another question that comes around way too often, with different answers depending on who you ask. Is Liu Kang also descended from the original grand champion of Mortal Kombat, the great Kung Lao? If you ask co-creator of Mortal Kombat John Tobias on Twitter, his opinion's a solid no. In a series of tweets, he clarifies that it was a result of the original Mortal Kombat movie. In the movie, there is no modern-day Kung Lao introduced. Instead, the character of Liu Kang and the great Kung Lao's ancestry was merged together. In John Tobias' opinion, any mention of it in the games, for example, as stated in Mortal Kombat 4 and Gold in Goro's bio, identifying Liu Kang as the great Kung Lao's descendant was a simple mistake caused by the movie. Liu Kang and Kung Lao were meant to complement each other as close friends and complete opposites at the same time. Liu Kang represents the present-day successful hero, Kung Lao represents a legendary hero from the past that eventually failed. What connected them together was their shared sense of responsibility to fight for peace, not a familial blood relationship. 
However, in today's Mortal Kombat, John Tobias' opinion may have less weight. He left the company during the production of Mortal Kombat Special Forces, and he hasn't had a role in shaping Mortal Kombat story since then. If Liu Kang today is considered to be a descendant of the Great Kung Lao, it is a much more gray area that has some fairly compelling pieces of evidence to actually support it. We know Liu Kang's ancestors were also skilled martial artists thanks to Mortal Kombat 11's introduction of one of Liu Kang's ancestors during a mirror match. Am I in a hall of mirrors? I am your ancestor, Tzu Kang. It is an honor to do with you. Round one, fight! And some of the great Kung Lao's physical features strongly resemble Liu Kang. Bandana on his head, similar arm gauntlets, they're very Liu Kang. But one of the most straightforward acknowledgements of a familial link comes from the Mortal Kombat mobile game. One of the exclusive Liu Kang character cards named Ancestor, Great Kung Lao. So the most updated, complete answer in today's Mortal Kombat seems to be that Liu Kang is a distant descendant of the Great Kung Lao, making Liu Kang and the modern day Kung Lao some sort of distant cousins. While the modern day Kung Lao is a more direct descendant, a straight line versus branching family trees. Or you can accept John Tobias' opinion and say there's no relation at all. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer. It goes without saying that Liu Kang story-wise is the most influential character when it comes to the series progression. Much of the main storyline shift and change almost completely depending on Liu Kang's successes or failures. And outside of the games, he's been a part of almost everything Mortal Kombat. Most famously Robin Shu's legendary portrayal, although not the only one at this point, is the greatest live action representation of Liu Kang, hands down. Liu Kang's been in animated form in movies and in the Defenders of the Realm animated series, the cartoon based on an extremely violent M-rated game and adapted for the children of the 90s. Many years ago, Rain and I were engaged. There's no time to explain more now. Please, try and understand. Oh man, did you see that? Yeah, poor Lou. The guy's so jealous he's gonna bust a gut. Now let's move. You gotta get your butts back to Earth pronto. Shao Kahn is starting his invasion. I'm not going. Hello, Earth? Invasion? I've got to find out the truth about Kitana. If she really cares about Rain or about me. Oh, boy. Okay, okay, I give up. But his most bizarre adaptation is from the Malibu comics, where Liu Kang works a regular job in Chicago as an architect. I have no idea where they got that from. I can't imagine Liu Kang sitting down, working in a downtown office building, working an office job. And he gets attacked by ninjas while he's at work. Okay then, in the actual in-game story, Liu Kang never gets attacked by ninjas while working his 9 to 5. Liu Kang began life as the son of Li Kang and his mother Lin Kang. He also had a younger brother Chao Kang, but it's unclear how close Liu was to his family. He became an orphan at a very young age and the whereabouts of his brother are unknown. They were likely separated when their parents died. Liu Kang was taken in by the Order of Light an ancient sect of Shaolin monks residing in the mountains of the Honan province in China. They were comprised of warriors from all over the world that focused on martial arts training and spiritual perfection, learning pacifist principles of nonviolence unless absolutely necessary. As a child, Liu Kang excelled in his training alongside his close friend Kung Lao in the Shaolin Wuxi Academy. Their talent caught the attention of Earthrealm's Thunder God and protector, Lord Raiden. The Great Kung Lao, the original ancestor from hundreds of years before, was killed by the Shokan Prince Goro in the Mortal Kombat tournament. Since then, Outworld has had victory after victory over multiple generations. The 10th Earthrealm tournament after Great Kung Lao's failure was approaching, and if Outworld won one more tournament, Earthrealm would be merged with the Realm of Outworld and fall under the rule of Emperor Shao Kahn. To prepare for this eventuality, Raiden began special training for the boys. He took Liu Kang to train under the legendary Outworld martial arts master Bo Raicho. Once he completed his training, he was enrolled into the White Lotus Society, a secret order of specialized monks pulled from the ranks of the Shaolin. The White Lotus Society was created by Raiden after the Great Kung Lao's death in order to train combatants in the defense of Earthrealm. As the direct ancestor of the Great Kung Lao, Kung Lao was groomed from birth to be the destined hero that would win the 10th Earthrealm Mortal Kombat tournament. But he rejected his destiny, wanting to forge his own path and eventually left his fellow Shaolin monks. Liu Kang was also left behind and questioned his place in the grand plan. Without Kung Lao, there would be no hope of victory. As the tournament approached, Liu Kang stepped before the Shaolin Grandmaster Wu and volunteered to represent the Shaolin in Mortal Kombat. If Kung Lao refused to accept his destiny, Liu Kang would step in and attempt to save Earthrealm. 
He was reminded that his mind and spirit had to work together to walk with the wind and ensure victory, and Liu Kang swore that he would not fail. The beginning of the tournament was close, and Liu Kang boarded the ship headed to Shang Tsung's Island, where it would take place. He sat by and watched, mildly entertained while the Black Dragon mercenary harassed the Hollywood actor Johnny Cage. But in time he decided to step in and stop the fight. Liu Kang took down Kano's goons and demanded that there would be no more fighting until the tournament. While on the ship he befriended and got to know Johnny Cage until they arrived on the island. Shang Tsung presented the opening rounds of Mortal Kombat alongside the Shokan Prince and current Grand Champion of Mortal Kombat Goro. Liu Kang's almost lifelong focused training with the Shaolin resulted in a warrior skill set sharpened specifically to defend Earthrealm in Mortal Kombat. He rose through the ranks of the tournament with a fierce resolve and confronted Goro in the finals, the killer of the original Earthrealm hero, the Great Kung Lao. In a shocking surprise to the outworld sorcerer Shang Tsung, Liu Kang avenged the death of his distant ancestor. In a final desperate attempt to secure victory for Outworld, Shang Tsung challenged Liu Kang in a final battle. <laughs> Upon winning the 10th Earthrealm Tournament, Liu Kang broke Outworld's winning streak, and according to the rules set forth by the Elder Gods, Earthrealm would be safe from Outworld unless they won another 10 tournaments in a row, a notoriously difficult task to accomplish. In his Mortal Kombat ending, it stated that Liu Kang's victory put control of future tournaments in the hands of the Shaolin monks. Shang Tsung Outworld would no longer be the hosts, and Liu Kang swore to continue the traditions of the Shaolin temples. Another effect of becoming the Grand Champion of Mortal Kombat was gaining a semi-immortal life. Long life for Liu Kang, so he could defend his title as champion through the upcoming generations. Back in Outworld, Shao Kahn was enraged at Shang Tsung's failure. It would be centuries before Shao Kahn could have another chance to take over Earthrealm. He threatened to execute the evil sorcerer, and Shang Tsung responded with the idea for an 11th tournament. Shao Kahn could propose a final tournament in Outworld. If Earthrealm won, they would be safe from Outworld forever. If Outworld won, Earthrealm would be merged with Outworld without need for another 9 tournaments. Khan liked the idea and believed that Outworld could win in the tournament if it was held there. He granted Shang Tsung his youth and ordered him to attack Earthrealm with his minions in order to lure Raiden and the combatants to his terms. When Liu Kang returned home from his victory, he discovered the aftermath of Shao Kahn's rage. The Order of Light was decimated in a revenge attack. All that was left were the skeletal remains of his fellow Shaolin monks, and the young students they were training in the way of the Shaolin. Against the Shaolin teachings of peace and harmony, he felt a powerful rage, promising bloody retribution in their name. At that point, a survivor appeared. It was Kung Lao. This shared tragedy brought the two friends back together again, but there was some animosity. Neither of them were there to stop the Shaolin from falling. Kung Lao had left them long ago to study with the White Lotus Society, and Liu Kang was competing on Shang Tsung's island in Kung Lao's place. Although they briefly blamed each other for not being present, the true enemy was clear, Outworld and both men decided to fight back together. They traveled to Johnny Cage's movie studio, which was under attack by Shang Tsung and his forces. The plot had worked perfectly. Attack the Earthrealm warriors and bring them together to accept the terms of the new tournament. Raiden took the opportunity to free Earthrealm from the Outworld threat forever. He accepted. He gathered Liu Kang and the others, and the combat in Outworld began. Much like in the previous tournament, Liu Kang advanced through the ranks effortlessly and confronted Shang Tsung again. He was granted his youth, he was much younger and much faster than he was before. Even with that, Liu Kang defeated him again, and Kintaro, the Shokan warrior that replaced Goro. The final combatant, the final obstacle that would determine the fate of Earthrealm forever, was the Emperor of Outworld himself, Shao Kahn. <laughs> Liu Kang defeated Shao Kahn in a stunning victory. He unleashed his rage on the Emperor, violent, quick blows. In his Mortal Kombat 2 ending, Liu Kang returned to the seclusion of the Shaolin Temple and paid his respects to his lost brothers. He believed his destiny was now fulfilled and reflected on his next steps. But he wouldn't have much time. Shao Kahn survived, recovered, and had no intention of keeping his word. 
he wanted Earthrealm and devised a plot to gain access across the dimensional barrier. If he couldn't win the Mortal Kombat tournament, he would invade Earthrealm with a massive army and impose his rule by force. In preparation to merge the realms against the rules of the Elder Gods, Shao Kahn unleashed his extermination squads to hunt down the people of Earthrealm, and he began absorbing the millions of souls across the realm. He was using them to gain more power, but Earthrealm's combatants were kept safe. They were Raiden's chosen warriors, and Liu Kang was at the forefront of Earthrealm's defense. All of Shao Kahn's extermination squads had Liu Kang as their primary target, the only warrior that posed a threat to Shao Kahn. Liu Kang defended himself from attack after attack, and ultimately confronted Shao Kahn again in his fortress before he could begin merging Earthrealm and Outworld. Liu Kang carried the rage of losing the Shaolin with him, and the presumed death of his friend Kung Lao, who had confronted Shao Kahn just before he did. <laughs> In the end of Mortal Kombat 3 and Trilogy, Shao Kahn was sent back into Outworld, and the merger of Earthrealm and Outworld was prevented. The death of Kung Lao fueled much of his victory, but peace had finally returned to the realms. Before the portal to Outworld closed, Princess Katana appeared and thanked Liu Kang for not only saving Earthrealm, but Outworld as well. The rule of Shao Kahn was over. There was a far greater threat than Shao Kahn waiting in the shadows, however. The Elder God of Death Shinnok used the opportunity to escape the Nether Realm, where he was banished for eons. He entered through the newly freed Edenia with his forces and his demon army, and he knocked out Queen Sindel. It was time to attack the Elder Gods in an act of revenge and destroy all the realms. In Earthrealm, Liu Kang had been building the Shaolin Monk's Order of Light back up. The temple had been reconstructed, and Liu Kang became a teacher to the new recruits under the leadership of his adoptive grandfather. He took a personal interest in one recruit that he befriended in America, called Kai, and took him directly under his wing as his student. While the two of them were sparring, a sudden explosion came from the distance. Something from the sky crashed down nearby. Liu Kang ordered the monks to go back into the safety of the temple, and he set out with Kai to investigate. When they arrived, they found the wind god Fujin, wounded and about to be killed by Shinnok's netherrealm demons. Liu Kang and Kai fought side by side, defending him from attack. They had no idea who these attackers were until Raiden appeared and destroyed them, and he revealed the threat of Shinnok. The Elder Gods were weakened, and Raiden and Fujin the last survivors of Earthrealm's lesser gods. Immediately when Liu Kang heard that the restored realm of Edenia was under attack, he grew concerned for Gatana's safety and offered help. Raiden returned to the palace of the Elder Gods to fight back against Shinnok, while Liu Kang gathered Earthrealm's combatants. Kai questioned how they would go about gathering everyone, but Sonya Blade appeared with a chopper and Johnny Cage. They were already aware that trouble was happening. Liu Kang filled Sonya in on the situation, and the group also recruited Sub-Zero, Bihan's younger brother. They had to reach Denia and take the fight directly to Shinnok. Sonya used her Outer World Investigation Agency technology to open a portal to Denia, where Quan Chi, Shinnok's evil sorcerer ally, was waiting. When Liu Kang arrived in Edenia, he found a once beautiful realm destroyed by Shinnok. He knew if Shinnok wasn't stopped then and there, the God of Death's rampage wouldn't end. Earth Realm and every other realm in existence would be next on Shinnok's list. Liu Kang and his allies fought back against Shinnok and Quan Chi's forces. In the end of Mortal Kombat 4 and Gold, Liu Kang challenged Shinnok alone in combat, then was offered the opportunity to become King of Edenia when it was revealed that Katana was still alive. <laughs> The war is over. I've once again defended my title as champion of Mortal Kombat and defended the realm of Earth. But I have failed to save the realm of Edenia. In doing so, I have also lost Katana forever. Katana? Yes, Liu Kang. It is I. But I thought you were gonna look. With Shinnok's destruction, you have not only saved the Earth, but you've also saved my own realm. For that, I can never repay you. Knowing that you survived is all that I need. As heir to the throne of my realm, I offer you the chance to rule at my side, as King of Edenia, forever. I cannot accept your offer. I belong here on Earth as champion of Mortal Kombat. Then, I wish you good luck, Liu Kang, on all your journeys. Goodbye, Princess Katana.
Liu Kang felt too much responsibility for Earthrealm's safety as the grand champion of Mortal Kombat, so he refused the offer from Katana. He remained in Earthrealm training the new Shaolin monks, but these times of peace disguised a threat to Earthrealm's greatest hero. Quan Chi escaped after being taken to the Netherrealm by Scorpion, and Shang Tsung joined him in a deadly alliance. They discovered the ancient, immortal army of Onaga the Dragon King, the first known emperor of Outworld, who was assassinated long ago by Shao Kahn. His army was powered by the souls of the dead, and they would constantly regenerate upon destruction. Shang Tsung and Quan Chi planned to use his army to take over the realms, now that Shao Kahn and Shinnok were no longer real threats. The only threat remaining? Liu Kang. Shang Tsung traveled to Earthrealm and posed as Kung Lao, waiting for his moment to strike with Quan Chi. <laughs> Liu Kang was dead. Raiden was forced to gather Earthrealm's combatants without him. Together, the remaining warriors attacked the two sorcerers' fortress and their army of Outworld Tarkatans. Raiden's warriors were killed in battle, and he stood alone against Shang Tsung and Quan Chi. The soul of Liu Kang was absorbed by Shang Tsung, and he became one of the countless inside the sorcerer. From within Shang Tsung's being, Liu Kang was tormented, seeing the battle with Raiden through Shang Tsung's eyes, yet helpless to aid his friends. During the battle, Onaga revealed that he had resurrected. The Dragon King had Shinnok's amulet in his possession, and without any effort, charged through the attacks of a combined Raiden, Quan Chi, and Shang Tsung. Onaga was going to reclaim his army from these thieves. Raiden sacrificed himself in an attempt to stop Onaga, but his efforts were futile. Onaga survived the blast, revived Earthrealm's combatants, and turned them into mindless servants. Raiden's sacrifice did have a positive effect, however. Shang Tsung's body was destroyed in the blast, and the souls that were trapped within were free to ascend to the heavens. Liu Kang chose to stay behind and find a way to help his friends. Raiden reformed, but his contact with Onaga and Shinnok's amulet resulted in a very different Raiden, angry and ruthless. This much darker Raiden desperately sought a solution to Onaga's resurrection and decided to revive Liu Kang. He infiltrated Liu Kang's tomb in the Wuxi Academy and desecrated his body with dark magic. Liu Kang's body revived but contained no spirit. It was an empty shell. This zombie-like Liu Kang escaped and went on a rampage murdering any innocent in its way as Liu Kang's spirit watched in horror. What kind of monster had Raiden created using his body? Liu Kang felt responsible for his body's actions and began searching for help. He knew the warrior Shujinko unintentionally resurrected Onaga. During his quest to stop Onaga, Shujinko encountered the spirit of Liu Kang, and Kang taught him some of his fighting techniques. Liu Kang also contacted Ermac, a being created by the fusion of multiple souls, and enlisted his help. Ermac's mission was to find and stop the uncontrollable zombie Liu Kang, and free his friends from Onaga's control. In his non-canon Mortal Kombat Deception ending, Liu Kang defeated Onaga, and body and soul were reunited. <laughs> friends had been freed, Onaga had been defeated, and the realms were secure once more. But there was one battle that remained. Liu Kang's body had been used by some unknown force as a tool of destruction. It had left death in its wake and needed to be stopped. The chaos would end in Earthrealm. The fight raged with neither combatant able to best the other when a jolt of energy crackled through them both. Liu Kang's nerves blazed like fire, and he felt a rush of air fill his lungs for the first time since his death. He was Liu Kang once more, protector of Earthrealm, champion of Mortal Kombat. In the canon version of events, zombie Liu Kang never confronted Onaga, and his body and soul remained split. Shijinko did defeat Onaga, and Ermac was successful in freeing Liu Kang's allies from Onaga's control. Thanks to the efforts of Liu Kang, they were able to live on, but Liu Kang needed to find a way to reunite with his body. Without being anchored to a physical form in the realms, his spirit would be forced to move on. Kitana chose to anchor Liu Kang's spirit to herself into a more permanent solution could be found. During the events of Mortal Kombat Armageddon, the end of all the realms was coming. Constant combat made the fabric of reality reach its breaking point, and the only way to prevent it was by triggering the safeguard within the elemental warrior blaze. The beast contained the power to alter reality, but could only grant it to a warrior that earned it during Mortal Kombat. Johnny Cage gathered an army to try and take the power of Blaze, and Shinnok returned to gather his own army. 
An epic battle was brewing between the two sides. Before it started, the decision was made to anchor Liu Kang's spirit to Nightwolf instead of Katana. In his non-canon Mortal Kombat Armageddon ending, Liu Kang destroyed Blaze and claimed his power, finally reuniting himself. <laughs> Released by Blaze's destruction, reunited Liu Kang's body and soul. Whole once more and possessing the power of a god, he confronted Raiden, who had been corrupted by his suicide. Liu Kang reluctantly defeated his mentor in an epic clash. With consent of the Elder Gods, he replaced Raiden as protector of Earthrealm. In the canon version of events, Nightwolf was killed in combat, which broke the anchor holding Liu Kang's spirit, and he finally moved on. His body, however, was still up and active as an empty, violent vessel. On the battlefield, it found Shang Tsung and acted on pure rage, in an attempt to mutilate the sorcerer. Combatants fell one by one until only Dark Raiden remained, destined to battle Shao Kahn. Kahn destroyed Blaze and claimed his power. The only hope Raiden had left was to send a message to the past in the hopes that this Armageddon could be prevented, hoping that different decisions would lead to Shao Kahn never claiming such a terrifying power. A new history was created reverting back to the era of the 10th Mortal Kombat tournament, Liu Kang's original Mortal Kombat victory. In this new altered history, Liu Kang's origins remain mostly the same. He still participated in the 10th Mortal Kombat and awaited his turn. One major difference was the addition of Kung Lao. This Kung Lao didn't refuse to participate. Liu Kang was chosen over him, and he was eager to prove that he had what it takes. Liu Kang's only goal was to focus on the importance of securing Earthrealm's safety. Raiden also revealed to Liu Kang and the others that he'd been receiving visions from the future, a future where Shao Kahn gains the ultimate power. They had to follow his lead carefully while figuring out the puzzle of his visions. Raiden's message from the future also consisted of the phrase, he must win, but who? For now, Liu Kang would follow his instructions closely. As Liu Kang's victories began mounting, Shang Tsung started to become concerned. This young warrior was beyond skilled and posed a genuine threat to Outworld's victory. In one of his major tournament victories, Liu Kang defeated Ermac, while Shang Tsung watched closely. Ermac was a powerful combatant created from multiple souls merged into a singular body. In response, he sent Princess Kitana to ensure Liu Kang's defeat. But instead, Kitana found that this fierce warrior actually had a gentle heart. Do it. Do what? Kill me. Why would I do that? I came to kill you. I have failed my father, my emperor. Shao Kahn is your father? I have disgraced him. You must kill me. I will not. This encounter never took place. You have disgraced no one. I hope we meet again, under different circumstances. Liu Kang had no desire to harm her, but he didn't share similar feelings to the rest of his tournament opponents. By the time of the finals, he was the only Earthrealm combatant left that wasn't yet eliminated. He had to win. He defeated the combined forces of Scorpion and his Netherrealm master Quan Chi, a seemingly impossible task for most mortals. One final obstacle remained, the legendary Prince Goro, the killer of the Great Kung Lao, and current Grand Champion. I did not. 
not expect to fight in this tournament. But eventually, even the Shaolin produce a warrior worthy of the Shogun. I know who you are. I am ready for you. I will give you a warrior's Liu Kang defeated him much to the shock of Shang Tsung. He had avenged the great Kung Lao and was close to becoming the new grand champion. Now only Shang Tsung stood his way, a sorcerer that himself was once champion. If Tsung failed, Shao Kahn would have his head. Say it. I concede. Earthrealm was saved and Liu Kang's victory was celebrated at the Wuxi Academy with the Shaolin monks and the rest of Earthrealm's combatants. Shang Tsung was set to be executed by Shao Kahn for his failure, like in the original version of history, and proposed his plan for another tournament. This time an army of Tarkatans from Outworld were sent to Earthrealm to disrupt the celebrations. Many Shaolin monks lost their lives, Sonia Blade was captured, and some of the monks were taken prisoner. Raiden had no choice but to accept the terms of the new tournament and travel to Outworld. He also had a vision that Liu Kang would defeat Shao Kahn in combat, and believed they were on the right path to prevent Armageddon. While Jax and Johnny Cage searched for the missing Sonia, Liu Kang and Kung Lao followed the trail of the Tarkatans to rescue the captured Shaolin monks. The Earthrealm combatants continued fighting in the Outworld tournament, and Princess Katana discovered a horrifying secret. Shao Kahn commissioned the creation of a monstrous copy of her known as Melina that would act as her replacement. When she learned about the existence of Belina, Shao Kahn imprisoned her, and Liu Kang traveled with Kung Lao to free her. Raiden saw that Katana's loyalty to Shao Kahn was coming undone quickly, and believed that having her as an ally would serve as an advantage to Earthrealm. Liu Kang and Kung Lao worked together to free her, and encountered her Shao Kahn bodyguards. I hope your girlfriend is worth Lord Raiden's anger, Liu Kang. Notice that I am ignoring you. Hmm. They must have relocated Katana. We have indeed. We knew someone would come for her. Who are you? There is something familiar. Do you need help? Four arms against two is hardly a fair fight. Liu Kang? You have had your match against Liu Kang. Now you will face me! Now if you have any honor left, you will tell us where Katana is. She has been taken to the Colosseum, where she has no doubt been executed. Why? She may yet live. Let us go. Katana was moved to Shao Kahn's arena, where the finals of the tournament were being held. Liu Kang was already becoming tired of Raiden's visions. His choices based on them had already resulted in several people being harmed, and now Raiden was preventing him from fighting Shao Kahn. Raiden believed actually that Kung Lao was he who must win. Liu Kang had no choice but to watch as his friend became a victim of Khan. Earthrealm is free! Kung Lao! No! I shall strip the flesh from your bones! Witness, boy, do you know who I am? The murderer of my friend. I am Shao Kahn, conqueror of worlds. You will taste no victory. You will taste your own blood. For Kung Lao, 
the Shaolin and Earth Realm. have spoken. Earthrealm is free of Shao Kahn forever. Had it not been for Raiden's visions, Kung Lao would have never been put in such a position. As promised, according to the rules of the Elder Gods, Earthrealm was now protected from ever merging with Outworld. Much to Raiden and Liu Kang's horror, the future remained unchanged. Kung Lao had truly died for nothing. Shao Kahn was a survivor. Thanks to the magic of his evil sorcerers, he survived and was slowly healing. Like in the original history, he invaded Earthrealm directly, this time convinced by loopholes in the rules, revealed to him by Quan Chi. The massive invasion commenced with an army of monsters and Tarkatans. In the final moments of Khan's attack, he sent a resurrected and powered up Sindel to take out Raiden's chosen warriors. While she attacked, Liu Kang wasn't there to help them, since he went with Raiden to visit the Elder Gods. They were powerless to do anything. Shao Kahn technically hadn't broken the rules of Mortal Kombat since he hadn't merged the realms. He simply attacked and invaded. When they returned to Earthrealm, they discovered the aftermath of Sindel's attack. The only survivors were Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade. Everyone else was slaughtered by her until Nightwolf sacrificed himself to destroy her. Another tragedy Liu Kang blamed Raiden for. Raiden kept chasing his elusive message from the future. Meanwhile, Liu Kang's friends were all dying. My heart too is heavy with their sacrifice. Their deaths achieve nothing! What is next, Raiden? Tell me the future! How do we honor their sacrifice? I will go to Quan Chi, ally our realm with his against the forces of Outworld. What? Grovel before Quan Chi? What will he demand? What price will be paid? Would any price be too high to save Earthrealm? I had prayed it not true. But you have gone mad, Raiden. Your visions... They are nothing. Delusions of an adult mind. Liu Kang, please. By this point, Liu Kang lost faith in Raiden completely. Raiden discovered that Quan Chi resurrected the dead warriors in the Nether Realm as undead revenants loyal to Shinnok. A horrible fate. In the final battle, Shao Kahn began stepping through the dimensional barrier into Earth Realm to begin the process of merging the realms together. And Raiden realized what his message from the future meant. Shao Kahn had to be allowed to win. He must win was referring to Shao Kahn. If he started merging the realms, he would break the rules of Mortal Kombat and the Elder Gods would be forced to act. But Liu Kang had enough. He would stop Shao Kahn before he could start. And in his Mortal Kombat 9 non-canon ending, Liu Kang challenges Raiden for Godhood. Having defeated Shao Kahn, Liu Kang believed he was the only one capable of defending Earthrealm against outside threats. During the invasion, Raiden had been more burdened than ally. Brazenly, he demanded the Elder Gods grant him the Thunder God status. In a one-match Mortal Kombat tournament, Liu Kang defeated his former friend and mentor. Liu Kang's request was granted. He was made a god, the new protector of Earthrealm. In the canon version of events, in a tragic accident, Raiden killed Liu Kang, and he also shared the same fate as the others, becoming another realm revenant. He is here. No, do as I say. Have faith in the Elder Gods. Have faith in me. Liu Kang, I cannot let you fight Shao Kahn. Then you are my enemy. Liu Kang, stop! <laughs> Liu Kang! Raiden! No! Enough of your madness! If you must die, so be it! <laughs> By the gods, no! No! 
No. This was not meant to happen. What did you do? Liu Kang, forgive me. You have killed us all. Oh. Oh. Ultimately, Raiden was correct, however. When Shao Kahn began the merger, the fury of the Elder Gods fell upon him, and he was taken for punishment. Shao Kahn was finished, but his destruction left an opening for Shinnok to return just as in the original events of Mortal Kombat 4 and Gold. Except this time, there was no Liu Kang to defend the realms. This Liu Kang was loyal to Quan Chi and Shinnok. During the events of the Mortal Kombat X, Shinnok began his assault on the realms and was thwarted by Johnny Cage and the Special Forces. Shinnok was imprisoned inside his amulet and locked away in a dark dimension. But a cleric from the Chaos Realm named Havoc was sent by Quan Chi to retrieve the amulet and release him. Havoc concocted his own plans and failed, and Quan Chi was enraged deciding to use his revenants in a future attempt, including the revenant of Liu Kang. Years later, as Quan Chi worked to retrieve Shinnok's amulet and release his master from his prison, he became the main target of the special forces. At some point, Jax and some of the other revenants were rescued and restored from Quan Chi's control. Then he led a special forces task force into the nether realm to finally find and capture Quan Chi, and the revenant Liu Kang was there to defend his new master. In your weakened state, is it possible for you to release Shinnok? I am more than capable. And Devora? Are you certain she is capable? She will bring the amulet to me. And I'll be waiting for her. Jackson Briggs. A pleasant surprise. Nothing pleasant about it. So you return to Raiden? The foolish follow fools. <laughs> Raiden did his best. He saved Earthrealm. He murdered me! That isn't true. You were not there! He stole everything from me! You do not deserve to rejoin us. There is no need to stop it. Jax defeated Revenant Liu Kang and brought Quan Chi into custody. While he was being held, Hanzo Sashi discovered that Quan Chi was there alive, and he attacked with the Shirai Ryu. In an act of retribution, he decapitated Quan Chi, but not before Quan Chi released Shinnok from the amulet. Now that Shinnok was freed into Earthrealm, he immediately set out to find Earthrealm's life source, the Jinsei. He planned to corrupt it, destroying the entire realm, and moving on to the next one. Shinnok began his attack and unleashed his revenants on Raiden. Liu Kang used the opportunity to avenge his own death in Raiden's hands. your destiny, Liu Kang. More visions, Raiden? Do you still see the future? The visions are gone, but I know what should be. I was put here by your hand. An accident, which haunts me to this day. The poison of Shinnok's corruption was spreading throughout the Earth Realm, and the Special Forces responded by sending Johnny Cage's daughter Cassie and her team to confront Shinnok and the Revenants. They saw as Liu Kang was giving the other Revenants orders, gathered an army of demons, and was prepared to lead them into another invasion of Earth Realm at Shinnok's orders. Then the plan was to invade the heavens and destroy the Elder Gods on behalf of his master. But Liu Kang would never have the chance. Shinnok was defeated by Cassie Cage. His defeat left an opening for Liu Kang. In his Mortal Kombat X ending, Liu Kang decided to fill the throne of the Nether Realm and plot his future steps. With Shinnok defeated, Liu Kang explored the Nether Realm, a world that, without Shinnok's controlling power, 
had descended into chaos. Liu Kang was no sorcerer or elder god, but his fighting skill was more than enough to beat Netherrealm's demons into submission. Liu Kang realized that Netherrealm was his for the taking, and that ruling appealed to him. He would assume Shinnok's throne, and ponder the conquering of other realms. Raiden took Shinnok's amulet and used its dark powers to enhance his own. He grew angry and vengeful, torturing Shinnok, then removed his head and delivered it to Liu Kang as a warning. He recognized Liu Kang as the new leader of the Netherrealm, but left him with a stern warning not to plan any action against Earthrealm. During the events of Mortal Kombat 11, Raiden and the Special Forces took the fight preemptively to Liu Kang before he could strike. They descended into the Netherrealm, and Liu Kang defended his home when he realized that Raiden was acting as a diversion. How the Chosen One has fallen. Raven's right. Whatever Shinnok did to you, you're a lost cause. Fuck you. Liu Kang's stronghold was destroyed, yet a mysterious stranger displayed the power to recreate it. This was Kronika, Shinnok's mother, a titan older than the Elder Gods, and responsible for the flow of time. Kronika sought to reset history and create a replacement timeline, a new era where Raiden wouldn't pose a threat to her plans. Kronika had restarted history countless times in the past, completely unknown to the mortals living within it, with various small changes in the hopes that it would be a timeline without Raiden. She promised the Revenant Liu Kang that he would prosper in a new era, and she began recruiting combatants throughout history to fight for her while she worked. Creating a new era would require much time and effort. In the meantime, past and present began to clash, resulting in the younger Liu Kang from the past to appear along with many others from his time. They were pulled into the present just before Kung Lao's death in the Outworld Tournament. The younger Raiden replaced the darker Raiden from the present timeline, and confusion was all around. But Liu Kang still knew that he had to stand against Shao Kahn, who was transported with them. Chaos broke out when Shao Kahn realized his throne was taken by a new emperor. Ashtek custom requires all refugees be offered assistance. I offer it to you, Shao Kahn. I am no refugee. I am Khan of Outworld. Vacate my throne, or I'll soak these sands with your blood. <laughs> 
During the attack, Devora appeared from Portal and offered escape for Shao Kahn and his minions. Much had to be learned in this strange twist of fate. Liu Kang promised to help Katana free Outworld from the threat Shao Kahn posed, and he traveled with Raiden and the others to the Special Forces base, where some of the other combatants from the past had emerged. First, they had to figure out what was happening. The Special Forces detected a portal from the Netherrealm opened by the Wuxi Academy. Liu Kang and Kung Lao agreed to go investigate the situation together, and what they found were their fellow Shaolin monks slain, and they were disturbed to learn about their present-day counterparts of Dark Destinies. Earthrealm's Jinsei energy bubbles up in its springs. That's no good. We've seen firsthand what happens when the Netherrealm screws with Earthrealm's life force. They will not reach the grotto. It is protected by powerful magic, the deadliest traps. I am sure our counterparts from your era are already dealing with them. Kung Lao, Liu Kang, you might want to sit down. I die in the Colosseum. You on a rooftop fighting Lord Raiden. Our future, Liu Kang. It is insane. Obsessing over it will not change it. Neither will accepting our destiny as evil undead warlords. I'm not. But we can't change a future we don't fully understand. Lord Raiden will guide us. Can we trust him? It appears he got us both killed. So many Shaolin. They died defending our sacred ground. The Nether Realm will pay. Whoever came here knew how to disarm these traps. Do you know how? The monks never taught me. More likely you did not attend class. Watch for the pattern. And pick your moment. Easy enough. What's next? Everything. Poison gas, shooting spears, flame jets. Our plans require that you live. Jade? What happened to you? An untimely death. Like yours, due to Raiden's incompetence. You cannot turn us against him. We know about our deaths. They were caused by our mistakes. You have been deceived, Liu Kang. The truth is, Raiden murdered you. Lord Raiden may make mistakes, but he doesn't murder his followers. Together, Liu Kang and Kung Lao fought off the Netherrealm attack from Revenant Jade and Scorpion from the past. They went deeper underground to protect the Dragon Grotto, a small spring hidden underneath, and usually protected by Shaolin monks. Earthrealm's life force, the Jinsei energy, would bubble up to the surface in the Dragon Grotto. Kronika needed its energy in order to generate enough power to restart history. More obstacles stood in Liu Kang and Kung Lao's way, such as Kronika's Enforcer Garrus and themselves. Is there any point to us asking you to put those back? They said you'd come. Who said? Who do you think, Kung Lao? Welcome to your future. Courtesy of Raiden. Our future may be tragic, but it's not Lord Raiden's fault. You've both been warped by Shinnok's evil. Shao Kahn snapped my neck in the arena. Raiden saw it coming and did nothing. I would have defeated Shao Kahn, but Raiden wanted the glory. His lightning cut me down. No, I don't believe that. One day Raiden will betray you. Then you will believe. Ah! 
The thought of becoming you sickens me. Is it me, or could they be telling the truth? Worry about it later. We have bigger problems. With this power, Kronika will remake history. That was easy. in time. With every death and rebirth, I grow stronger. Liu Kang and Kung Lao failed to stop Garrus and reported back to Raiden with the news. Kronika was one step closer to achieving her perfect new era. While Raiden began gathering support to fight back against Kronika, Liu Kang joined Katana's quest to free Outworld from Shao Kahn. If she could rally the Tarkatans and Shao Kahn armies together, they could end Shao Kahn's rule. Kotokan and Jade had been captured, but Katana's focus was to appeal to Baraka. Katana stopped Scarlet, and Liu Kang was able to rescue Jade without any Tarkatan casualties. Once she gained the support of the Tarkatans and Shao Kahn, Katana moved against Shao Kahn, and Liu Kang witnessed her become the new Empress of Outworld. What? The throne is yours. You have united Outworld, Katana Khan. She's now officially out of your league. I am humbled, Kotal. Revenant Liu Kang remained by Kronika's side, ready to defend her from any incoming attack. He expressed concern that many of their allies have already fallen. Kronika revealed that she was seeking to retrieve a crown created by Shang Tsung to house the power of absorbed souls. With the crown, she was able to finally complete the creation of a new era. Meanwhile, Hanzo Asashi lost his life attempting to secure passage to Kronika's fortress, and his younger scorpion persona from the past promised to carry on his name. When the wrong scorpion appeared in front of Liu Kang and his allies, history began to repeat itself. Raiden was adamant that he couldn't be trusted, and Liu Kang was suggesting that they hear him out. Raiden and Liu Kang were about to come to blows, just like when Liu Kang was killed in the past. Shinnok's amulet was beginning to affect his judgment with its darkness. Lord Raiden, we should listen. He may be telling the truth. There is only one way to find out. <laughs> Stop this! Step aside, Liu Kang. Put down the amulet. Its darkness is taking hold of you. Our time has run out. I do what I must to save Earthrealm. Stay down. The realms hang in the balance. To defend them, I must command order. I thought it impossible. But the Revenants were right. You cannot be trusted. I do not need trust. I demand obedience. Enough of your madness. If you must die, so be it. This... This has happened before. Suddenly, Raiden came to a realization. This had happened countless times, as if memories in his past that he had forgotten were suddenly unlocked all at once. He saw multiple eras that Kronika had written before in an attempt to get rid of him. In every single one, the alliance of Liu Kang and Raiden came undone and pitted the two against each other. One alternate era that Raiden witnessed was one in which their universe clashed with a strange outside one populated by costumed heroes and villains, and Shao Kahn had merged with one of their new gods, the evil Dark Side. The new monster created by the merger was called Dark Khan. In that timeline, a version of Liu Kang defeated this Dark Khan and was granted the godly powers of the hero, Captain Marvel. <laughs> Through 
intense study, Raiden was able to unlock the secrets of the Rock of Eternity and determine its function. He decided to emulate it and create a Captain Marvel of Earthrealm. Raiden infused Liu Kang with his own power as well as the abilities of his fellow gods Argus, Fujin, and others. In order to transform himself into a being of unstoppable power, Liu Kang need only shout, Mortal Kombat. I have been a fool, Liu Kang. Once Raiden came to his senses, he revealed what he learned to Liu Kang and the Earthrealm warriors. It was time to finally come together. Kronika appeared and mentioned that they had this conversation several times. Raiden and Liu Kang together opposed a threat that Kronika couldn't risk. They couldn't be united. In an effort to stop their alliance, she froze time with the added powers of her newly acquired crown and took Liu Kang to her fortress where he encountered his revenant. Raiden and the others began traveling to Kronika's fortress and armies clashed while Liu Kang's revenant used Shinnok's dark magic to absorb the soul of his living and younger counterpart. Younger Liu Kang was still alive but barely, incredibly weakened from having his soul absorbed. Since he was from the past, if he died, Revenant Liu Kang would also vanish from the timeline. But the Revenant used his increased power to finally confront Raiden in an ultimate showdown. Raiden, however, had enough of the Revenants. He had a drastic plan to save Liu Kang at the cost of his own godhood. Time after time, Kronika's schemes have pitted us against each other. That cycle must end, Liu Kang. This time it will! Your power? Is this Kronika's gift? A gift to myself, you could say. You stole your own soul, perverted your own nature. It's a lesson you taught me, Raiden. To fight my enemies by any means necessary. I have conquered the darkness within me. You must do the same. You will have to kill me. I would rather save you. to Raiden. He is part of me, bound to my soul. He made me a god, for now at least. A god? Incredible. Now he's out of her league. My revenant counterpart. 
I have absorbed his knowledge of the keep, of Kronika's plan. I know where to find the hourglass. This was something that never happened in any timeline before, Kronika's worst nightmare. Raiden used his powers to transfer his godly energy into Liu Kang and merged both Liu Kangs together into a new being. Liu Kang was now a god, fire god Liu Kang. His powers were incredible and he was determined to stop Kronika once and for all. Kronika knew her success was no longer certain. For the first time, she was caught completely off guard from an event in the timeline that she didn't have a hand in creating. Once the combined armies of Earthrealm and Outworld arrived at the shores of Kronika's fortress, Liu Kang used his immense strength to break through and confront his once fellow revenants. Just after Kronika began reversing time, which had no effect on Fire God Liu Kang, and Cetrion was forced to step in. Your allies are gone, but mine remain to defend me. Finish him! Realm's Jinsei flows within you. Let it fuel your fire. to fear mine and Raiden's powers combined. A demigod's power cannot rival that of an elder god. Cetrion! As you wish, mother. <laughs> Battle, Cetrion. You fight for your mother's vision. But as a goddess of virtue, you know that her desired balance is folly. Heed me, Cetrion. He lacks our vision and wisdom. Please. No virtue is served by condemning the realms to endless war. You have done admirably. Yet there is one final service to perform. Yes, mother. I understand. Kronika was desperate, seeing the power that Liu Kang had gained. So desperate that she absorbed the essence of her own daughter, and in a panic, used the power to restart time. The history that Liu Kang was trying to save no longer existed. Time was reversed, and there was no one doing it. The only path forward was to take Kronika's power by force and rewrite all of history himself. In his non-canon Mortal Kombat 11 ending, Liu Kang destroyed Kronika and used her hourglass to rewrite history alongside his friends, now gods. What does it mean to wield the sands of time, to be the chosen one? It means making choices that break your heart. For the protection of all, I shared Kronika's power with the people I trust and love most. Together, we replaced the Elder Gods that Cetrion had betrayed 
and became eternal guardians of the realms. Still, my heart longs for a simpler life, a kind one cannot have being the chosen one, let alone an elder god. What Kitana and I would not give for those simple pleasures. Hmm. Perhaps in another timeline, it could be ours. In the canon version of events, Liu Kang also used Chronicle's Hourglass, but the end result wasn't one involving his friends becoming gods. In fact, Liu Kang rewriting time had the potential to shatter reality itself due to one crucial mistake. Liu Kang sought to reverse time with the advice of the now mortal Raiden at his side, but he needed Chronicle's crown to properly use the Hourglass. Without the crown's power, he wouldn't be able to. Shang Tsung appeared from a void where he was placed by Kronika with Nightwolf and Fujin, and they warned Liu Kang. Raiden didn't believe him, but Liu Kang trusted the council of Nightwolf and Fujin, and he devised a plan of his own. He sent the trio to the past of that current timeline before the crown was destroyed. Once they retrieved it, he could create the new era. Sending Shang Tsung and the others back resulted in several drastic changes to the events that had occurred. Sindel was revived and in league with the now-healed Shao Kahn. Their survival disrupted the alliances forged in the previous timeline. In this timeline, Fujin revealed to Liu Kang his destiny as a fire god, and plans were put in motion to ensure that happened during the final battle. But Liu Kang and Katana were captured by Shao Kahn and Sindel before Liu Kang could become a god, and his revenant paid the price as well. Katana shall be put in chains. Let her suffer the anguish of defeat. And what of him? Time after time, Kronika's schemes have pitted us against each other. That cycle must end, Wu okay? You will have to kill me. I would rather save you. By the Elder Gods! Shao Kahn! He smashed my legs. Shao Kahn! In the end of Mortal Kombat 11 Aftermath, Shang Tsung revealed the secret plot. He had every intention of using the crown himself and gaining the power of Kronika's Hourglass. Shang Tsung turned against his allies, killing Shao Kahn, Sindel, and ending the threat of Kronika. But Fire God Liu Kang existed outside of space and time. He was aware exactly what Shang Tsung was planning, and allowed it to happen. It was time to retrieve the crown and end Shang Tsung's ambitions of conquest. Liu Kang, I thought your duties required you stay behind. A lie, something you know well. I see now. The hourglass showed that only I could wield the crown against Kronika successfully. You let me win. And to ensure victory, you sacrifice the lives of your friends. How deliciously cold-blooded. They are not gone, Shang Tsung. They will live again in my new era. Your new era? You underestimate my prowess, Chosen One. I have the crown. I have absorbed Kronika's power. You may have attained godhood, but I am the keeper of time. You are no match for me. No 
more timelines will be twisted by your evil. Liu Kang successfully restarted history and wrote a new era of peace and warmth, but mortals from across the realms would have to choose if that peace is maintained. Every realm would have their free will to decide. In this new era created by Liu Kang, he would be reintroduced to familiar faces that he knew very well but wouldn't recognize him, old friendships restarting from the beginning, and new heroes and enemies fighting for their own reasons. In any case, Fire God Liu Kang will always need warriors to help protect Earthrealm and all of reality, regardless of the timeline. You have chosen to defy peace. Then you have chosen war with a god.